Any time we got ourselves some goddamn respect. I just watched episode five, Homecoming of the Penguin. And at one point, my wife turned to me and said, Hey everyone, this is Digital Charcuterie. Thanks for stopping by. And shout out to all the new subscribers. Thank you so much for joining me here. If you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. We're talking Penguin today. Love this show. Let me know what you guys think of the show in the comments down below. And if you have any theories, let me know in the comments down below. I read them and I reply to all of them. This show is fantastic on so many different levels. The theory like level is one of them though. It's fun to like have a show where you can actually talk and discuss what may or may not happen in the coming weeks. And that's what this is giving us every single week. But this episode homecoming was just that it was a homecoming for Penguin, for Sophia and for Sal Maroney and maybe for Vic as well. Right off the bat, we kick off with the events from two weeks ago. Last week, we saw Sophia's point of view, and this time we see Oz Cobb's point of view, where Vic drives the getaway car away, and they burn it. They let it burn. And then, and this is what really got me, is we're taken back now when Oz Cobb tells the stories of Rex Calabresi. Rex Calabresi is the man that he idolized as a child. He drove his car down the street like a goddamn chariot or something to that effect. I'm paraphrasing. But he idolized, he idolized this guy. He was in the comics, of course, Rex Calabresi is a mobster before Batman ever came to fruition. And it's the same in this show as well. And in the Batman Reeves verse as well, we're getting Rex Calabresi was a character that existed long before the Batman made an appearance, long enough to be Oz Cobb's father. That is kind of what I'm getting. But later on in the episode, we have a moment with him and his mother and his mother kind of talks about his father and how things were taken from her, obviously her sons and how the streets, how Gotham, the streets got to Oz's brothers and he couldn't do anything to save them. I have a feeling like Rex Calabresi is Oz's actual father. I think in one version of the comic, Selena Kyle turns out to be the daughter of Rex Calabresi. So I feel like in the Reeves they're playing around, they're manipulating some of the canon to fit their need and their storytelling. And that's where I feel like this is heading now is Rex Calabresi will be probably maybe even not even identified, but I think we're going to be led to believe that he is his father. We might find out. We might not. They might not even bother with that little bit of information that might not be important to us. But I think right now, I believe that it is. This episode, aside from Homecoming, was all about, like I said, family, but also about the rising of power, the tension now between the crime families in Gotham. The Falcone are gone. They are taken out. Sophia wiped them out. Oz Cobb saying that she did them a favor. But now the Maronis need to be taken out. And Oz decides to take matters into his own hands. He kidnaps Taj Maroney, has him tied up, and has an exchange plan with Sal and Nadia Maroney. In that he says they're going to have an exchange that night. And they're going to bring the mushrooms because they were stolen from Oz in a previous episode, obviously. And this is what this series is about. is Whoever basically controls this drug is going to be controlling Gotham. And actually, side Akbar... Sophia Falcone says, with the drugs, they will paint the town red, and that town is about to get painted red. It is getting painted red, and it's going to get even highly more painted red as the season continues. When they do the drop-off, they meet up with Taj Maroney. He meets up with Nadia and her bodyguard, and Oz shows up with Bruno, and they pull up in their van, and they pull out Taj and he's just soaking wet and he's like no he's healthy and he's all his his mouth is taped up and she's like let him speak and Oz plays a coy like he does he plays it off like not gonna happen he's fine you don't have to worry about it and they have an embrace and Nadia and Taj have an embrace and as that happens you realize that it was an ambush on the Maroney part which is hinted at earlier in the prison conversation between Sal and Nadia when Penguin is there and he tells him to shut up but in the middle of it Sal says don't worry we got this covered We'll, we'll take precautions so there's a shootout uh, two against however many, but Oz takes him out because he's Oz Cobb and this is his show. That's that's He's never going to lose that fight, ever. And but then just when you're like, well, how do they get out of this for real? Like, for other than it being his show, how do they get out of this? He puts on his lighter and you're like, oh, he's doused in gasoline. Which made me think, how did Nadia not smell that on him? But then he lights them on fire and that's when my wife turned to me and said, oh, fuck. It was wild. He just watched them burn. He saw them burn. He took everyone out to the extinguishers come down he goes okay we got to get out of here they drive off with the shrooms but then it turns out that the shrooms are all dried up except for two batches except for two batches of shrooms they're all dried up so now his power play on gotham is taking a stumble a bit of a hit where is that going to lead it's going to lead us into the sophia falcone side of the coin now on this episode which is after last week look she's going to win an emmy colin farrell this week 
I, Colin Farrell's winning Emmys. She's winning Emmys. If they don't win Emmys, if they don't win Emmys, it's a sham. Because just, again, like, he brings his A-game. Like, every scene he's in, you're like, wow, you can feel, like, the power of Oz, but then also the vulnerability of him. And when he was, when he's with his mother, there's a completely different character there. Like, he, he, there's transformation with his mom. And speaking of his mom, his mom, her storyline was just, it's heartbreaking, heart-wrenching to see what she's dealing with. Uh, it, it's it's rough. It's taking a toll on Oz. It's, and and Vic sees it firsthand, and you get that, and you're like, oh, man, this is, this is a tough spot. But back to Sophia. She obviously gassed her family last week, and now the police are there. Not just any police. Commissioner Gordon, not quite that, but we have police chief Mackenzie Bach from the Batman making his way here, having suspicions that Sophia might have been around, but also mentioning how VD has gone missing. We know that at the end of the last episode, obviously, Sophia says, we need to talk. And they go, and they don't really have much of a conversation. She wants money. And he wants nothing to do with her. So he, she uh, kind of gives him some torture. She tortures him a little bit. Because Sophia, 10 years in Arkham, will make you a little bonkers. And that's what I love about this show is the city. Like, I say this every week, but Gotham is the villain. And Arkham is attributing to that. Eventually, VD tells Sophia a sob story about how her mother wanted to leave. And they were cousins. And he loved his mother. And she wanted to leave Carmine because she knew what was going on. And blah, 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 blah. And so uh, Sophia ends up caving and says, okay, fine. And she lets him off and they take the money and you think all is well and good. But then at a meeting with all the new, like the, the pawns, she calls them pawns. She goes, my father saw you as pawns. I don't say that. I don't see you as that anymore. You are no longer pawns. You are part of this family. And the Falcone family is ex nade There's no more Falcone family. We're the Gigantes and the Gigantes love the pawns is what she says. And she pours the money, tells them all to take the money. But before that, but before that, we got to rewind. Vidi, Johnny Vidi says, what the hell are you doing, Sophia? And Sophia decides just to blow his brains out. She just blows his brains out. The show is insane. Before all of that, Julian Rush appears. And I was like, what's happening? I have a video coming out this week on Julian Rush. But Julian Rush wants a part, wants a piece of the pie. He wants to feel the rush no pun intended, probably intended, that Sophia feels when she unleashed the gas. He said that the police came to talk to him and he told them some BS story. But he knew that it was her and he wants in on the action and she trusts him and she brings him in. And he's not just in with the other pawns. He's standing at the back overseeing it all, kind of giving a look of pride. It's making me feel a few ways about Julian Rush. Obviously in the first, the second episode, I guess it was, I was like, oh, is that Scarecrow? We have some other theories about who he is could be coming into play. But also, could he be even like a double agent? Is he working with somebody else on the inside trying to infiltrate Gotham's crime ring? Does he have a vested interest in the shrooms, in the bliss that is out there? Earlier in the episode, this episode is just, oh, it's just so good. Penguin has a guard at Blackgate kill Maroney, but he fails. And Sal calls Penguin, and that's when Penguin goes on high alert. He has Vic take his mom out of town, they go to Crown's Point. They he takes out of town. Just get the hell out of here. Get out of Dodge. That's just where Homecoming comes in. And Sal says, "I'm coming for you." And Penguin's like, "Oh yeah, I don't think so." That's a really good Penguin impression. Really good. But when they get to Crown's Point, you start to see that little gangs are starting to take over sections of the area. And I'm not saying no man's land, but I'm saying no man's land. And when they're there, Oz finds a token for an old trolley car, and it's an underground trolley car. Okay, Danny DeVito, I hear you. I hear you. In the mid-season trailer, he's wearing the, sh the same jacket as Danny DeVito's penguin. It's a comic accurate jacket. I get it. And he decides to make that the base of operations because down in the underground trolley area, the weather, the atmosphere is perfect for growing the shrooms. So now he has his base of operations set up. Vic is his right-hand man. I'm curious to see where Vic is going to go in this series because he's like a parallel almost to Oz, right? He's he's the he's the driver to Oz. Oz was the driver to Sophia, and we know how that all worked out. And Oz and Oz was the driver before that, and the person Oz drove before that got killed by Carmine Falcone. So is Victor at some point going to turn on Oz? Is he going to turn the table on Oz? I still I have a theory video that he's Victor Zaz. Going on here, my belief is still he's kind of he's being set up for like the Jason Todd type character. I don't see Penguin's mom or Vic making it out of the series uh, either alive or in One Piece. I just don't see that, especially after what just went down. I think Maroni and and, and Sophia 
don't say Falcon, Gigante, they're going to really go after Penguin now. And but you don't get Penguin, you get who hurts the most, and that's going to be his mom, obviously. And Vic is going to be a part of that. So I think I- I'm guessing Sal's going to take out one, and Sophia will take out the other. So you figure out which one wants to kill the other one, and that's when it's going to happen. And we only got a few more episodes to go, so it's coming sooner than later. I don't even know if both of them will make it to the finale at this point. Oz wanting to take over power is really hinting at where he's going to go. This is Oz's show. Oz is being set up to be something big, potentially in the Batman 2, but he's going to mean more to Gotham than he did in the past. That is his end goal. That's the Rex Calabresi of it all. He wants to be that guy. He wants to be revered. I also like that he talked about Rex Calabresi to Vic at the beginning, the way... The way he talked about Rex to Alberto at the beginning, but Alberto laughed in his face and Vic was along for the ride. Vic appreciated the story and respected the story. It seems like a story only he only tells people he absolutely trusts, which is why I'm on the father bandwagon. The underground trolley was interesting too, because obviously I was taken right to the Arkham games, but also the Batcave. Is this sim- like is this more digging deeper into the penguin? Is this the in this universe the evil version of Batman, basically, which lies which leads me into more believing that Vic is the Jason Todd because now he has an underground lair, the Batcave. The parallels between Batman and Penguin are substantial. Sophia Falcone continues to be just this magnificent manipulator. She says what she needs to say to get ahead. Penguin is the exact same, but we know where Penguin's going. We have an idea of where he's headed, Batman too. But Sophia is is a new character, obviously not comic, I know. But in the TV series and in the Batverse and the Reeseverse, she's a new character. And we're seeing her take the steps to become the big crime lord of Gotham and she approaches Samroni and she respects him or she makes it seem like she does. She says, you were all about family. And she compares it to when Oz ratted her out to her own father and Carmine had her put in Arkham for 10 years, had people say that she was mentally ill and all that. And she said, you never would have done that. She says to Sal, you wouldn't have done that. He goes, no, I would have ripped out Oz's throat and she's like exactly and he even says that the Falcons eat each other and the Moroni don't and that's very family oriented again this episode is very family oriented Oz and his mother Vic and Oz and Sophia and (laughs) killing her last family member in VD right in the head and you see Sal and you see how much Sal hurts for the loss of his wife and his son you see it whereas Carmine threw one threw his daughter in an insane asylum and hung his own wife. So those are the parallels there. So Gotham will be painted red by the end of this season, and we're going to have a better understanding of what is going on. But once again, Batman, not even mentioned. There's no reference to Batman. There's no, oh, where is Batman? Or they're not even worried about the bat at this point in time, which could could throw a viewer off. However, I believe there's a reason for that, and that reason is He's gone. There's Batman isn't in Gotham right now. He is he's left town, and I don't think Jim Gordon's too happy about that. I'll have a video on that in the coming days as well. I thought this was a really strong episode. After last week's, it's hard to top last week's what happened. And they were getting there. There was instances in this episode that I was it was I was just like, this is fantastic. The violence is obviously a key factor to that, but also the way they're using it to tell the story, to enhance the story, and these characters. And you see Penguin, like you, Penguin, you want to root for, but then he burns a mother and son alive. He burns, and then you're like, oh yeah, he's Batman's bad guy. He is one of the worst people on fictional Earth. We can't root for you. You're a terrible human being. And that's what I love about this show is it is the Penguin, and you root for the Penguin, and you root for Sophia, and then you remember they are god awful people with an agenda to only be the top dog of crime. <laughs> the top dog of crime. And that's it. They don't. There's no real reason to root for them other than you want to root for violence. And that's what this show brought this week. When they go to get Taj, when he's getting a tattoo done, and you just see the blood spatter because you don't hear him because he's in the music. Blah, blah, blah. That was fantastic. But look, I like this episode. Let me know what you guys thought in the episode down below. Again, I'm going to have a Julian Rush uh, video coming out this week and a Batman Don't say No Man's Land, but it's a No Man's Land video coming out as well. I am loving this show. I look forward to it weekly, and I just I'm sad that it's going to come to an end, and we're going to have to wait uh, a year and a half for the Batman two after this. But good things come to those who wait. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Give us a like and a subscribe. But until next time, may be the master of your own universe.